What's going on YouTube? So today's video we're going to be diving into the brand of Dolce & Gabbana and we're going to be talking about two forgotten fragrances that really don't get a lot of mention, but they're solid gems. Le Batelard 1 and Le Fou 21. These two fragrances are from the Anthology line, and I'm not too sure if the Anthology line was once a luxury line or not, but there is another one. Uh, I'm not sure what the name is, so I'm just gonna leave a little caption down below. The only review that I came across was from Drat Duck, Cody, who did his a few years ago, and that one came across as a, like a poor man's version of Hugo Boss bottle from what I was able to remember. These two fragrances are from the Anthology line, as I stated. These were both launched in 2011. Let's just start with Le Fou 21. Now the top notes for this one here are violet, bergamot, and coriander with the mid bin, cognac, juniper berries, and cardamom with the base bean, tonka, ginger, fern, and woody notes. And when it comes to Le Batelard 1, top notes are birch, juniper berries, and cardamom with the mid being watery notes and coriander, and the base is vetiver, cedar, and olibanum. What do I get out of Le Fou 21? I don't get the violet leaf, the, the cardamom, or the coriander along with that bergamot. This just goes straight into juniper berries and booze. There is some sweetness towards the base with that tonka bean, and there is a little bit of that fern as well. This is somewhat linear on my skin. This comes across as masculine, fresh, boozy, and woody. And when it comes to Le Batelard 1, this just opens up with watery notes and spices. This is pretty much a very linear scent, way more linear than this one here. Le Fou 21 comes across as more of a green, woody, boozy, aquatic type of fragrance that does have some maturity and sex appeal, while this one here comes across as a woody, aquatic. There's not much to say about this one here. This one is aromatic, it's fresh, it has some clean components to it, but this one here is just more interesting. Both of these fragrances are daytime casual, they can be worn to work, but this one here, Le Fou 21, I find that it could be used as a semi-formal event. Nothing too tuxedo-esque, but a black tie event, yes. Longevity on these, five to six hours for Le Batelard and for Le Fou, this is six to seven hours. Projection on both of these are more so on the moderate side. Prices for these, this one goes anywhere from 37 to $60 Canadian, and this one here goes anywhere from 25 to $60 Canadian. I believe that you can get a tester for this one for just like $25 to $28 Canadian. Wife's thoughts on these? When it comes to Le Batelard, wife thought it was a fresh, woody, aquatic, fresh, clean, and more so casual. Nothing groundbreaking, but nothing bad. And for Le Fou, this one she actually preferred a lot more. She thought it was classy, mature, sexy, more of a night out scent. She definitely gets the woods and that cognac or just the booze accord. Final thoughts on these. Now this is not gonna be a battle. I just wanted to, to talk about two great underrated scents, two forgotten fragrances from Dolce & Gabbana. But let's go with this one here. Le Batelard 1. I like it, but it's nothing groundbreaking. I find it's nothing unique, but this is more so for the casual consumer. Someone who wants a fragrance that from like a fancy brand, because everybody thinks of Dolce & Gabbana. This is luxurious, this is fancy dancy, this is kind of bougie. Until they, like, 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 these are just common people. If, you are de if you're deep in this game, you just know that D&G does some good quality fragrances for a very economical price. But if you're just an everyday consumer who wants something that sounds very different from a luxury brand, you may like this one. When it comes to Le Fou 21, this is certainly my preferred out of the two. This one has maturity, sex appeal, but a younger man, someone who's in college, not high school, but someone who's in college, who is a little bit, let's say, more of an older soul. So like, I'm 43, but I still act like a 20 year old, okay? I have to kind of be a little bit more grown to pull this one off. But if you're like, let's say that you're 23, but you have like the soul of a 30 or 35 year old, you could pull this one off quite easily. This one here is a little bit more versatile than this one here. But if you want two fragrances, one that could be used for the daytime, then go to the nighttime that are from D&G, Dolce & Gabbana, and that just really don't get a lot of mention. You may like these ones. They're both very economical. Longevity on this one could probably use a bit of a boost. This one here, not complaining at all. This one really does its job. 
Versatility on this one is just way better and overall I think it's a better blend That's why I kind of prefer it and I find that that cognac note along with the woods is certainly a really nice touch So rating out of five we're gonna go with a three and a half out of five not bad not great pretty solid though and rating out of five for Le Fou, we're gonna go with a four and a quarter. So definitely two very understated, very under the radar fragrances. Unfortunately, these are forgotten and I have no clue if these are from once a luxury line. I, I don't wanna get the, the third one because I really don't need any more bottles, but the bottles themselves are simplistic and kind of classic. So they, they're not gonna stand out on your shelf. They really aren't. So they do look kind of dated, but the scents themselves are not. So everyone, that is my video of two forgotten goodies from Dolce & Gabbana, Le Fou 21 and Le Patelard 1. So have you smelled these? If so, which ones out of these two do you prefer? If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, share the video, subscribe, and if you haven't, hit that notification bell. I thank you for your time, take care, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching, everybody.